Yesterday I cut down this poplar tree right here. It is about 24 inches at the bottom and very tall. And uh, it's going to be getting milled into various lumber, but I want to try making some poplar bark siding. I was looking up stuff on the internet about using poplar for log cabins and then stumbled upon the poplar bark siding. And it said the perfect time of the year is uh, May to mid-June, which it's in that range right now. So I think it'd be cool to give this a try. So let's get started. Long story short, what I'm gonna do is mark up here how long I'm gonna cut my section of log and I'm gonna kind of ring around the tree. And then right where you see that tape line, I'm just going to score a line with a chainsaw and then try to peel that bark and let gravity kind of help me along the way using some uh, 24 inch long tire irons and chainsaw wedges and just kind of work it off. And I think it's probably gonna fall off pretty easy, but it could be somewhat difficult. I don't know, let's see. So I think this is going to be a little tricky to get started. I wish I could have found my flat pry bar, but I couldn't. But I think these, um, I think these tire irons are going to work pretty decent once I get going. And if I need to run back to the house and get something, I can. But I feel like these will, oh yeah. Can't hear it, but it just peeled off nice. Try see if you can hear it. No way you can hear that. So I think I just need to kind of get it going. I think once I get this going, this is going to be the perfect tool for this. And having two of them, these come from Harbor Freight. I recently got them for changing some, or removing some tires off of a motorcycle. Yeah, I think y'all can probably hear that. Listen to it. Oh yeah, it's gonna come off. And then what I was thinking with these is, same way, I've taken logs like this before and using bunches of wedges, split trees in half, uh, trying to do some different projects. And when you're doing that, you just drop wedges. As you're splitting it, you drop wedges, and the more you split it, they just keep shifting down in there, and they just hold it. So it's definitely would be nice to have more than one person doing this, but it's doable on your own. And this is a complete novelty to be doing this. I have no reason. I'm wasting time, and I shouldn't be. And I think if you peel a whole tree like this, if indeed I can do it, I think this would be a lot of siding. I mean. I've probably got about a 30 some foot section that I think would be fairly easy to do this with. I think once you get up into the gnarlier part and where branches are, it's probably not worth the effort. Um, and if you're already cutting down some poplar trees, it'd be a good use of the bark if you're looking for something to do with the bark.
got everything back up to the tractor. Very pleased with the results. It was a lot of work, but it's actually right much square footage because there's not a lot of overlap with this siding as far as what I can see. And here's the rest of the tree. So if you look way down there, you can see the part that's skint and I can pretty much come all the way up to right here. And I guess if you wanted to get in between these sections of branches, you certainly could too, and I probably will. You know, it'd be pretty easy because all I'd have to do here, hack this off here, hack it off as long as I'm making the shingles and then just pull that off. That'll come off really easy. When you're working it off the full length, like I did here, it's very tricky. Otherwise you'd have to cut the log up and then you wouldn't be able to mill it up. Um, which would be a gigantic waste. And the main reason I'm getting this log is for lumber to start with. This just turned into a benefit. And I'll probably put this up in the gable, gable wall um, above the poplar siding that's on the building now. Um, so that'll be pretty cool. So it'll be this poplar bark siding going up and around a stained glass window. All that bark come off that tree, and there's the stack. Just peeled the second section. I think this is all we'll do. From here on up, well, I could go another four feet or so. But from here on up, you start getting into the branch area, so there'd be a lot of holes in it, which could be interesting. But uh, I think for expediency, I'm going to move along um, from here up to this little crook right here is probably a nine, 10 foot section. So uh, I'm just gonna mill that. There's too much stuff in it, I think, to peel, but who knows. Let me get this out and do the same thing I did to the other one. Just got the second section of bark stacked on top the first section that I stacked last night. Uh, sorry, the wind's blowing. I don't know how much that's gonna affect the phone. But very pleased with the results. It's not, you know, nothing beats just driving to the store and buying something done so it involved finding this tree marked it out a long time ago came back and cut it got access over to where it was cut uh, skinned the bark a lot of work got it out of there stacked and then it's going to have to dry for you know a couple weeks and then i can start processing it into its final form which will just be at least straightening the vertical edges and then maybe squaring the bottom i'm going to do some experimenting i'll at least straighten up the sides and make them parallel uh, and i'll probably do all this on a radial arm saw i think it's the perfect saw for doing this on and in the capacity of my saw will handle this stuff and uh, i'll make it into varying widths and um, i think that it could look kind of neat to leave the bottom just the chainsaw which is not perfect and kind of staggered a little bit like i've done on my tiny house with the siding um, which is over there so you can see sort of that varied um, the, it's basically, they're not sawn straight, but those are hand split. So the coarseness of this, um, I think lends itself to that. My, I was talking to my dad about this and sort of my feelings about it of not exactly wanting to say that the bark siding is corny, but I could see it very easily entering into this category of like when people put faux stone over their foundations, even though it is a real product, it could enter into kind of a... I don't even say cliche because this is so uncommon in my opinion um but i think it could be handled to where it could be perfect or it could be handled and put in a situation where it's just goofy looking um you know like i said it's going to go into the the other side but that gable in around the windows and then the poplar siding so it's pretty cool because you've got the siding boards which are poplar and then basically the bark off the same poplar tree, because this is the tree I'm using is going to be some framing lumber, but then some siding that's going to go around this side and then some more on this end down here. So it's, I think it's kind of fitting in this situation. And I'm going to be using it, I'll say subtly, because it's only going to be in the gables, a small portion. Um, and this doesn't look like much, but it's more than I think it 
more than it looks like and I've got access to as much as I want you know what I mean all the, all the woods on the other side you know all those trees that you can see that are sort of sticking up above the rest are all poplar trees not that I'm going to take them down in that specific spot but further that way there is um you know lots of them spread around and good for milling and uh situations where it's like trees like double trees coming up you could just take one of those uh you know I can you know do whatever I want and get as much of it as I want and then you have the advantage of using this material um, I also want to do a log cabin down at the end of the driveway really it would be reproducing a tobacco barn that used to be down there that got burned um, so I want to redo that and I may do that out of poplar poles in the sort of six to eight inch diameter which is kind of what that barn was made out of so when I do that I could skin the bark off of all of those as well and with this particular bark you can see its texture or the size of this bark is much larger so I, I don't know what you call the different parts of bark structure but so I'll just call it the peaks and the valleys you got the distance between the valley is pretty big so this part that kind of bulges out is pretty large um, and so you know when, when poplar trees are real young the bark is super smooth and then as they get bigger the bark gets can get really gnarly and it's almost tricky to tell right off the bat it can look like like a big red oak tree or something um, like if you were just looking at the base and not looking up at the tree so depending on the scale of the building you know I think you can pick this the scale of the bark and um, so a smaller tree would have a scaled down version of this and start to look a little finer, a little smoother. So if you were doing it on a building like that, um, that would look better in my opinion to not have such a heavy uh, uh, scale or dimensions to, to things. And then of course, then you would you know vary the reveal and the reveal meaning how much of the shingle is showing. Earlier in the video, I think I said something about reveal and I, and I was talking about overlap I didn't mean to do that um, but yeah probably more talking than is necessary right now but just doing a little bit of rambling a little bit of thinking um, also I calculated and I don't know if I'm getting this right but roughly uh, just the the stack that I had here last night so it was like from here down both sides from here down pretty much it came out to I think 60 three square feet is roughly what it was and I found online for this thickness of bark it came out to about twelve dollars and fifty cents per square foot meaning that it was like seven hundred and I think eighty some dollars worth of siding basically just one of these stacks <laughs> and again I'm estimating but you know give or take a hundred dollars or so it's probably it wouldn't surprise me so basically for covering I don't know, uh, two sheets of plywood, you know, thereabouts, it would it would cost 700 some dollars. And that, that's just materials cost. Who knows what it would cost the actual installer having done it. This is a premium product as far as when, when it's on somebody's, you know, lodge somewhere. There is no telling how much the installed price cost. Um, and I'm talking out of my you know what right now. So I, 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 don't, I do not know what I'm talking about. That was just some Googling. And trying to figure out what a per square foot cost is um, but uh, if y'all have any experience let me know thanks for watching this we'll see what happens with this in the future